Things were simple for him today. And look, he's been erratic to start the year, and he hasn't gotten the swings and misses. That's been the strange thing. Well, today he was just a machine. Complete game for him. Shut out, four hits, ten strikeouts. Everything that he hadn't been doing, he did it today. And we we take you through the phases, Frank, of Noah Syndergaard. Mm -hmm. These are his, his early starts on the year. See the hair and the ponytail, the beard got thicker and thicker. When you got those Hollywood looks, you can change it up. You got to change it up. And when you go out and pitch a game two hours and ten minutes, and you hit the game-winning home run, what a day. That's a big day. <laughs> I think he probably saw Avengers and feel like he just, you know, change it up. He was inspired by the uh, Thor Thanos conflict in that movie. And, uh, and, yeah, you know, Terry, look, you've seen him a million times. You managed him in New York. He, he wasn't himself beginning of the year. So what was different about him today? Well, I, I watched two of his starts. And one of the things I saw today is he had that two-seam fastball working. You saw a bunch of, the, bunch of the strikeouts for balls starting off the plate, coming into the zone. His, his two-seam fastball, when, when, he's, when he's right, it's almost hard to hit the ball. And, and when they do, he gets easy outs. And therefore, that's why he kept the pitch count down today. You know, when he's so four-seam fastball, he's behind in the count sometimes. And today, he just... Pounded the zone with good stuff. Yeah, he threw 35% sinkers. And he also threw the most curveballs he had all year, 17. I, I did his last start uh, for us on FS1. He had a good curveball, and he threw it, I think, six, seven times in that game. Is it something you want to try and get him to throw that sinker, that curveball, a little bit more? Well, I, that's what made him successful. You know, when he first came up, he was a, obviously a real power pitcher. But, you know, he was at 100 pitches in five innings because he was trying to strike guys out. He had trying to throw the four-seam fastball. And, and when he started using that two-seamer, he was getting easy outs. And, and when he, if he has to, you know, when he locates like he did today, he's going to get strikeouts. Frank, I, I need to break down the opposite field power now. I know there's a big man, right? But that was that was serious pop. It was a great swing. This guy knows what he's doing. I guess they have a lot of competitions between the pitchers, like Terry said. They all can hit. But, man, I mean, to, to pitch like he pitched today and hit a home run from a struggling Mets offense, put the team on the back, you know, you need that sometime for a pitcher just to go out and say, hey, I got you, boys. That's what he did today. Very impressive by Noah Syndergaard. And I, I look at him the same way I look at Strasburg. He's the most, the second most important player on this team because when he pitches well, you know what De DeGrom's going to bring. But when he pitches well, the Mets have a great chance of going a long way with another shot at the postseason. Yeah, and DeGrom was great last night. Syndergaard great today. Uh, Terry, let me ask you, is, you know, as a manager, when you have these guys, everybody throws, everybody throws hard now, right? Is it hard because you fall in love with that last pitch, 100 on the corner, that's beautiful, right? Is it hard to get them to understand to throw the secondary stuff? to throw maybe the off-season stuff to help? Is that, is that a, a battle you face with some of the younger guys? Well, they're, it's starting to go throughout baseball. So they're seeing other guys do it, too. You know, Kevin, they sit on the bench and they watch a game and they'll see, uh, they may see Max Scherzer throw more sliders than maybe he uh, normally does. And they're saying, geez, maybe I need to throw my breaking ball a little bit more. Right. So it spreads throughout the league. But these guys, their stuff is so good. And they do a good job of preparing and, and I, I, I will tell you, I remember when Noah first came up, one of the things he kept saying, he kept watching Jake and saying, you know what, I can do that. I, I know whatever he's doing, I can do it. And now all of a sudden, like Frank said, that, that competition amongst that pitching staff, uh, hey, look, I can do it too. Uh, they got a chance to be dangerous. Yeah, so there you go. Jacob DeGrom, last night looked good. Syndergaard, complete game today, not too bad. In the Hall of Famer, the big hurt, Frank Thomas. Terry Collins in his maiden voyage here on FS1. Good, good to have you, Terry. Uh, you know, we figured having you here for the first time, and obviously all your years of managing in the minors, in the majors, and most recently with the Mets, you want to pick your brand a little bit and, and take us into the role of a manager today and, and how it's changed. How has the role of the manager in your job changed? Well, it's changed dramatically due to all the numbers in the game now, due to all the information that's out there. You know, it's it's very important stuff, and, and, and everybody has to use it, but... You know, the time of getting to the ballpark at 11 o'clock in the morning for a 7 o'clock game so you can review the video of the night before so you can try to decide who you're going to play and who to give a day off to, those are over. You know, the, the managers today walk in and, and laying on their desk is the lineup or, or who should be playing today and who should be off today. And um, so to the manager today, his job is to make sure all his players are informed of what's going on. So, the, you know, the human element here, and look, everybody's using analytics. We know that. Everybody's using them to, to their advantage. But the human element, right? So tell me, A, how hard is it for you not to be able to write a lineup? Because I know you take pride in that. And then... When you have to go and tell this man that, hey, I know you've hit five home runs the last three games, but you're not playing today. Well, you know, it all starts, first of all, as a major league manager or even as a minor league manager, you're accountable for your team. You know, that everybody used to say, well, boy, you take the game too serious or you're too intense. Yeah, I was intense because I was, I mean, I was responsible for the way they played. And uh, nowadays, I, I don't know if the managers have to really worry about that stuff. You know, they, the lineup is, is taken, taken away from them. And yeah, and I will tell you, 
Frank Thomas walks in your office and he said, hey, how come I'm not playing today? And I said, well, you've played 12 games in a row and the, and the numbers say you need a day off. There's a fight. There's going to be a fight, and I'm not winning it. So <laughs> is, that, is that really difficult? Because I'm, like, thinking last year when um, Matt Kent was with the Dodgers. Two walk-off uh, game winning hits two nights in a row. The next day, they put him on the bench. And I was saying to myself, as a player, you want me to swing the bat tonight because I got good vibes. I'm hot, and the guy has done it for a long time. Does it make this part of a situation that veterans could be sending themselves out of the game? You know, you know Frank, I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen because I think it's, it's starting to be established even at the minor league level. Uh, so guys are used to it by the time they get to the big leagues. And by the, in, in, with what's going on in the big leagues now, they understand that those things are they're going to be happening. And I think that's the role of the manager, Jay, to explain what the system is at whatever organization you happen to be with. And, yeah, they're not going to like it, I'm telling you. The, these good players, they do not like it. They want to be in that lineup. That's why they play. They play to play every day. They play to win. And when and you take them out of those out, their elements, uh, you, you, you could have some problems. Before we get an update from Anaheim, you know, we, we talked about this, I don't know, maybe a month ago, Frank, right, in terms of there's so many uh, guys that are, you know, so young, they don't have managerial experience. And, and you know, I think, I know what it was, we were talking about Bruce Bochy, right? And... and those guys aren't around anymore. Terry Francona, Bochi, not a lot of those guys. Does it surprise you now that guys don't have to run through the minors to learn how to manage anymore? I mean, even Cora was on the bench for a year with A.J. Hinch, so he got that experience. Yeah, I, I just think it's important. I, got, I think it's important for you, for you to understand what it takes to get your players motivated. Uh, I mean, a lot of players, a lot of the great players, I, I'm telling you, this guy, you didn't have to motivate Frank Thomas to go out and play hard every night. So, there, But there are certain guys that you've got to be able to get into their psyche and get them better prepared each and every day. And, and I'm not sure unless you've done that, you understand what it takes to do it. And, and it's every day. And there's other things that come across your desk every day as a major league manager, Kevin, that has nothing to do with the game. And if you haven't been involved in it, it could frustrate you. Interesting, interesting. Mm. That's uh, not an easy job. Not, not an easy all. job. TV's a lot easier. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. It'll be just fine. <laughs> That's good stuff.